Today is all about learning what leverage is and how you can use it in real estate. As a single professional, I had debt and no savings after my divorce. I always wonder how I can start investing in real estate to secure my future. I studied programs that gave me all the benefits of investing in real estate. Some claim I could start with no money, but I could not find one that gave me the practical, actionable steps I needed. As a wealth advisor, I've met people that own real estate but weren't ahead financially. They were rich, but they weren't wealthy. Then I finally realized that there was one vital component missing that makes someone become wealthy or not. And on the show, I will reveal what I found and give you the step-by-step -step actions to start investing in real estate and increase your wealth. My name is Araceli. Let's get started. Well, let's talk about leverage. First of all, let's understand what that is. I actually learned it very early on uh, when I used to help my dad in his garage. He is a mechanic. And one day we had to change a tire. And you know, I'm there, I'm in my teens, so I'm, and I'm, I'm a woman, so I just couldn't do it. I told my dad, I'm sorry, this is too hard for me. I can't do it. And he asked me a very good question. He said, well, how are you going to do it all on your own if nobody's there to help you? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm just going to have to wait for somebody. And he said, no, let me show you how you can do it. And what he did is he gave me this big tube and we put it on the wrench and I went to the end and I pull it and I was able to undo uh, the, the knob in the tire. And at that day, I really understood the power of leverage. So as a woman in a, in a mechanical engineering degree, I always try to look for ways to be able to do something if it required force because you know I wasn't very strong and that is exactly the same concept when it comes down to real estate and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to leverage financially so what that means is that you're going to be able to buy a property with only a portion of the money and they're going to give you the entire house yes so that's what most people would buy properties right now so you put a down payment, which in some cases is as, be, as little as uh, 5%. And if you are buying your second property, most likely you will have to put 10 to 20%. But this is still a relatively small amount for what you need to pay. If there is a house for 500,000 and you need to put down 20%, you only need to come up with 100,000 out of the 500,000. That's a huge benefit to you because you're getting the entire house and the entire appreciation for the amount of years that you keep that house. That is a fantastic deal in my opinion. But is that the only thing that you can leverage in uh, real estate? Well, no, there's a couple things that you can really leverage. One of them is time leverage, right? So all of us have only 24 hours a day and seven days a week. I'm going to illustrate the power of time or you can, how you can leverage. So time, it's always going to be money. So if you're an employee working for a company, you will have an hourly rate that you make, like say $20 or $40 an hour. Um, so even for those who work on salary and make $60,000 a year, that works out to about $30 an hour and in a typical 40 hours uh, a week uh, that you need to work. So if you want to make more money, there's just only one way to do it. It's like you work overtime and, and that is if it's available, of course. So if you need to make an extra $1,000 a month and you make $40 an hour, that means that you need to work an extra 24 hours in the month or about 6.25 hours uh, a week extra. Well, that's kind of a lot, right? 
Um, so now all of these numbers are not exactly accurate as most company will have a different rate. Maybe your overtime, they pay you a little bit more money, but you get the idea. Now the concept of overtime might be not even relevant if you are working in a company uh, making a salary. So that means that now the company is expecting you to stay overtime to finish the job without getting paid any extra. So that is a problem. I went through that in many of my jobs and it was not fun because sometimes it took a lot of my time, extra time that I could have been at home and I wasn't paid anymore. And that's exactly what companies do. Companies do leverage the labor from other people. All companies that hire employees to do a job are leveraging the employee's time to make more money. So let's have an example that you can understand. So let's say that you're an electrician. Electricians normally will charge $100 an hour. And if he is busy, he's going to start hiring apprentices for $25 an hour. So let's say that he hires two apprentices full-time working 40 hours a week. Each one will get paid $25 an hour. So he's got two employees at $25 an hour times 40 hours a week. That means that he is paying $2,000 a week. But now he bills the client for 80 hours at $100. So that's equal $8,000 a week. So now he's making a profit of $6,000 by hiring two people. So now you get the idea that, you know, somebody can hire a bunch of people to work for them at a lower rate and then charge that job to the final end user for a bit more money. And that's what you can do. When you are in real estate, you really want to leverage somebody else's time. If you are a contractor, for example, and you want to work in the property, it might be in your best interest to just hire people to help you. Maybe you want to do a couple of the biggest things in the house and then hire somebody else at a lower rate to finish the rest of it. You will complete the property quicker and then you're going to be able to sell it faster. So therefore, you're going to have the profit a lot sooner and then you can go ahead and buy another property and continue the process all over again. And even if you are an electrician or a drywaller or a carpenter, you want to work with other contractors because they are going to be getting the job done a lot faster than you can. And believe me, I like doing uh, jobs and different things. I go to YouTube and learn. But sometimes you really want to expedite the job and get the right person to do it properly instead of you trying to figure it out. Well, unless it's a one odd job that you just want to learn and do it yourself. But if you are completing a fix and flip, it's better if you get the right professional to do it right the first time. And that is how you can leverage. So there's three ways that you can leverage in real estate financially by hiring somebody at the time and by hiring somebody and use their skills so there you have it so now you know what to do start leveraging as much as you can thank you for being here on the show please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when there are more shows available and if you would like to have more information on how to start investing in real estate, please visit my website at www.arisalihernandez.com. Thank you.